Wednesday. This is the Association of Clinical Trial Services. I am your hostess, Sister Yai, com your favorite community epidemiologist. And we are here to talk to you about health equity. As this is a live show, you can always call 312-738-1060 to come ask questions or have concerns about today's topic. I just want you to know that we are with TAX, the Association of Clinical Trial Services. We bring science to the people. Now, today is going to be a wonderful conversation. I'm going to divulge some information about statistics and data as it relates to the African-American community. But just before I do that, I always make sure that you know about what diversity and what comes with diversity in clinical trials. We have to increase our diversity in clinical trials, and these are some of the organizations that are working to make that happen. What we say about increasing diversity in clinical trials, we are specifically saying people of color, black people, Latino and Asian people, and specifically black people who are within a certain age frame of uh, at least adult 18 to, of course, maybe around around 60 if so. And the reason that we're saying that we need to be involved more in clinical trials research is because the medications and the treatment is what we need. And if we're not in the trials, then we're not going to benefit from the treatment. That is the way the science works. That's why tax brings science to the people because we want you to know that working within clinical trials research is one of our goals. It's a difficult a attainment but it's something that you can learn about. And that's what I'm here for, your favorite community epidemiologist. If you call the call-in live number at 312-738-1060, you're going to get Mr. Charles Patton, who is our people's counselor. He will be able to direct you right to me. But understanding, we want to do what? Increase diversity within clinical trials research. So that's one of the things that I always bring up to the people. Now, I'm very, very specific about health equity and understanding why health equity is a paradigm ch change. We're no longer saying equality, not that equality isn't good, but we're saying equity. Equality is like sameness. Equity is fairness. Equity gives you what you need to get to the place that you need to be where equality is just across the board and it doesn't look at your specific agenda or what it is that you need. I am pushing that we as a community epidemiologist change the paradigm of how it is we look at our health equity, and more importantly, our health standards, health indices, if you will. So if you have higher numbers compared to the dominant race, white, then we stop comparing ourselves to the dominant race because you're always going to be a disenfranchised. You're always going to have what they consider, you know, you're disproportionately impacted. And you're always going to be where we said dismayed because you have no reason. And I'll show you some numbers today where you can ever catch up. That's why health equity is something that we need to talk about and change that framework. And I'm working to do that very hard and communicating to the science community as well as our community about what what health equity is and how we in the black community, more specifically African Americans or black people or black people that are U.S. born, African U.S. born, how they look at health equity equity. Now, I just described to you three different models. I talked about the public health model, which we sometimes put in the public or policy part, but then there's the community model, as you can see on the right, and then obviously we always have our, what we call the industry models, the the the, the the people that actually do the work or the people that we think make up the treatments, we're looking at uh, pharmaceutical companies and people alike. But what's in the middle? Health 
equity. And that's the part that we want you to recognize is that whole paradigm is about putting you in the middle so that you get the best health possible. I have now just defined health equity. If you still don't understand how this can apply to your life or what the paradigm change really is about, especially if you're a professional that works in the health industry, please give me a call at 312-738-1060 and I can explain that a little bit further. But this is the concept of it really, you know, holistically. It is just an idea. It is a model, if you will, a construct that says how we look at change. We have our programs, we have our services. I specialize somewhat in both of those, but definitely data and research, and we bring it together to see what's in the middle, health equity. So that's what we really want to talk about. I just want to give a small shout out. We had a wonderful event for our Women's Health Social. Man, I am so elated to know that the honorees were far and above what I ever could have imagined. The Health Women's Networking Social is growing. With This is our seventh year in 2017 that we've hosted this event. We had about maybe I'd say around at least 55 or so people that attended. Next year I want to get that up to 65 or 75. I want to keep growing this event. And what do we do? We honor women who have been righteous contributors to their communities. And that's what we mean with the Henrietta Lacks Award. Award. Um, the reason that we're doing this award uh, ceremony, if you will, is that National Women's Health Week is now, by the way, um, and National Women's Health Week focuses on women's health. But rather than just focusing on women's health, what I do is I focus on women's health careers. Why? Because we all need a job, honey. No, <laughs> well, also because we need careers. And why not have careers in public health or some healthcare industry? I think those are viable positions to look into. More specifically, if you're looking to change into a new direction or a new career, healthcare can be for you. I myself am an epidemiologist, a community epidemiologist, and I would like to replicate that title more specifically into the community. But be also well informed as well as well paid. I mean, we want careers that are viable and sustainable. So I'm trying to create a pathway that does that. One of the things I think about a lot is community health workers and prevention specialists. How many do you know? For that matter, how many epidemiologists do you know? Well, you know one. <laughs> Sister Ya, I'm your favorite community epidemiologist. And I created that title in order that I can take the time to work more specifically and intentionally within community based organizations. That is what I do. So if you have an organization that's working in healthcare field and you need a little help with thinking about your data or your research or the direction you'd like to go, give me a call with TAGS, the Association of Clinical Trial Services, Sister Yai, and I can see how of assistance I can be to your narrative or to your initiative that you're thinking about. But the reason I'm showing you Henrietta Lacks is because we all know her story did come out with uh, Oprah who talked about her as far as she unfortunately had a virus in her body. Um, they used her body to take away the cells out of her body. Her cells kept living and they proliferated and kept growing and they some eventually became what they used for the vaccines and specifically um, polio vaccines. Now that's a great story except because she was black, African in America, they did not ask her. They did not give her family any compensation. They did not ask her for consent. Yet the money they made on that deal was astronomically high. In fact, even to this day, right now, today, her vial, a, a, a vial of her sales can cost at least $10,000. So they're still selling it. And her family has not gotten any retribution. Or in our case, we call it, when we look at something like that, we want to look at the aspect of 
paying her family back for what they did. And we say that as reparations. But whether it's reparations or payback, the bottom line is it hasn't happened. But I will be able to give you some updated news that the National Institute of Health has now included her family members, a few of them, on one of their boards where they will be looking at clinical trials research. So it's not the payment that I think they should get, but at least it works toward some type of reconciliation about what they've done to her mother without their consent or knowledge. And this is one of the issues ethically we have to deal with. So I always want you to remember when we talk about Henrietta Lacks, the HeLa sales, I want you to think of righteous contributors. And these are the people that give to their community, whether you're paying them or not, whether in spite of their situations or circumstances, they are providing a service to the community, which is what Henrietta Lacks has done. And just to remember, I call her the righteous contributor because she did, her cells did help so many people. Today, we don't even have polio. Young people are saying, what is polio? Some of you all have heard the word, but you don't even know that it exists. And that is because through the science, they were able to use her cells to come up with a vaccine. So I'm not against vaccines, but I am against unethical practices. That is what tax is all about. We are combating those unethical practices to the best of our abilities. And one of the ways we do that is by sitting on an institutional review board so that they can never do that again. Not on my watch if I know about it. I'm more than just a spook, honey. I speak up. <laughs> But that's one of the concepts that I wanted you to know about. Now, um, oh, this is not the right one. So, at any rate, um, I thought I had a video, I mean, not a video, but one of the, the particular concepts that we were using today, which was going to be on um, the statistics from CDC. And I don't see that that's here. Uh, unfortunately, they pulled up the wrong PowerPoint. I'm so sorry that that has happened, but now I don't have the data that I was going to share with you today. I should have checked the PowerPoint myself. But, um, okay, well, then I'm just going to have to try to do my best to remember some of it. But if you had some information or you wanted to... Um, talk a little bit about what health equity is, please give me a call in at 312-738-1060 and I'll be able to, to entertain some of those questions. And of course, we have Mr. Charles Patton there waiting for you. He is our residential people's counselor. He likes that title so much. Um, unfortunately, I do feel bad that I don't have, I cannot find the one that I needed. Um, I was looking for the actual, uh, what I would say, the actual statistics, but it's not, I don't see that slide set. So I have to move on. Well, let me just say then that at this point, what we'll talk about a little bit more and I'll share those data, that data with you at a, uh, the next time around. But then we'll just redirect and correct and go to the next one. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what are some of the specific ideas that we should be looking at in the black community or African American community as far as our health. I have launched what I'm calling, and we're using this terminology, the Emoja Healthcare Campaign. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the Emoja Healthcare Campaign. And the reason I've done this is because what we want to do is bring unity to our campaign. So in the Emoja Healthcare Campaign, as you can see on the left, we're talking about health equity equals what? Black unity. And in that, we have some very specific concepts that we'd like to deal with. Now, let me go over a few of them. I can't do them all because this is a paper that I had to write about. But one of the concepts is that we want to develop health equity as a community capacity building model. So remember that triangle that I showed you? Well, we want health equity to be with, you know, you saw it was in the middle. So if we want it in the middle, how do we work on the community concept to make sure that health equity is brought into play? Well, this is some of the things that the community can do. First and foremost, try to get the best health that you can possibly get. 
That's the first thing. And you are responsible for getting your best health possible. You, did I say you? You! <laughs> you, audience, you are responsible for your own best health. I said it. Now, is that responsibility just limited to you? No. But you are innately the one person that knows that your health better than anybody on this planet. Where's the center of the universe? It's inside of you. <laughs> That's a very ancient African understanding. The universe has no beginnings and ends, no boundaries. So therefore, the, must, the most appropriate center must be where you're at. So if it's you're the center of the universe, then how come your health can't be that center as well? And what I mean by that is you have to take on how do I make the best health possible in spite of, in spite of your heredity, your environment, and more importantly, things you do contract on your own. Now, we don't talk a lot about things. We, we do talk a lot about contraction, of course, with HIV, um, human immunodeficiency virus, and of course, with sexually transmitted infections and hepatitis B and C, those are contracted viruses and or bacteria and fungus. But when we're, some people lean on hereditary because if your mother had diabetes or your father, it could spread, you could be predispositioned to have diabetes as well. I mean, that does happen in family members brothers and sisters will both have diabetes so it is a hereditary issue there but there's another part so those are things you think about but they they're part of who you are and one of the things that we have to think about is how do we tackle those just because they're there doesn't mean we do nothing even if it's hereditary you don't do any you don't just say well it's hereditary i can't do anything about it you do your best to prevent and or mitigate. That's right, I said it, mitigate, which means even if you develop diabetes, you know, you went from pre-diabetes to diabetes, you still do your very best to have your very best health. And of course, the same old stories, messages. Of course, we're saying eat right, exercise, but I'm a little bit different. I also believe that there's more research to be done. Um, there was a um, an announcement made um, by Angela uh, Angela Bassett where she talks about her heart to heart program, and that is because people with diabetes are two to four times, according to her, two to four times more likely to develop heart disease. I'm not as specific on the data of it, but what I do know is that is a true statement that having diabetes or a metabolism system, a metabolic system that does not work properly, you can, it can, es what we call, escalate your chances for or exacerbate, if you will, your chances for developing heart disease. And I admit that a lot of people don't talk about that. So that's one of those key aspects within our Emoja healthcare campaign is that we are looking at concepts that we can work on individually, communally, and of course we have to think industry and our bigger society, right? There's always somewhere for you to be placed. And in this particular paradigm, I do have listed there, if, I don't know how well you can see it, but I do have listed there diabetes. So we have we have what we call partnership health. We have what we call the, the health care, we're looking at different series, and then of course special health elements, and diabetes being one of those health elements. I'm not just relaying diabetes, but I'm giving you an example of how health equity can work within it. So you wouldn't compare your health for having diabetes. So everybody wants to say the number of people with diabetes, right? They'll give you this big number. Let's just say we'll throw a number out. I really don't know how many people living in the United States have diabetes or have been diagnosed. And I don't even know that for the city of Chicago, to be honest. But let's we do know that people have it, right? We know that it's one of those leading causes of mortality. In other words, disease-written 
um, constructs that happen to human beings. So we know that. And using that construct, and we're thinking about people that have diabetes, they always look at the fact of, well, of all the people that have diabetes, how many of them are black or white or Hispanic or Latina, Latino, right? And, and what are their ages and what are some of the issues that they may have? So within all of that, black people would be the highest number of people living with diabetes or diagnosed. But then even within that, how many of them have what we call progressed to or moved to having heart disease? So this is one of those concepts that I, Angela Bassett, okay? How Stella got her groove back, honey. You know I was love digging that. Stella! <laughs> okay, I digress. But um, she was on the radio show this morning and she was discussing how people are not aware that those with diabetes have, a, again, a more likely, at least twice as likely, um, to develop heart disease. And heart disease as in having heart attacks or some type of malformity with the heart. That is a very true statement. And so as we know that, what can we do to prevent it? The same basic things. Be prepared. Ask questions. Of course, I hate to tell you, but you've got to talk to your doctor. And more importantly, you have to let people know that um, if it's hereditary, which you can do, your medications, which you can do, and the best that you can do, the exercise and the food. I know we don't want to hear those messages, but guess what? There's something to it. I'm also here to tell you that more importantly it's than just your hereditary or your... Um, or even the fact that you may have this disease, attitude means a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you truth, you hear me? The way you think about things, and I'm not telling you it doesn't prevent you from getting a disease. You know, it's a saying, it rains on the just and the unjust, honey. So what does the just do? They just get an umbrella. Let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> What we want, what does that really mean? That it doesn't matter who you are or who you know or what you've done or didn't do. You know, people want to put it off on karma and all these other things. Karma goes both ways. It's not just always negative and it's not just always positive. But it's about where you are in life. And some people still develop it no matter what they've done. They cannot be overweight. They cannot have had those issues. Yet they still develop diabetes. And, and that's just one example, of course. And that doesn't mean that something you did is bad or it was your fault per se but then once you know about it you do your best so health equity would say in the individual light health equity would say why don't you work on getting your best health and setting goals of what you want to see so if you're diagnosed with it you want to say in two years I want to lessen my medication or I don't want to take this type of medication maybe another type maybe I'll go from you know I'm just putting it out there. I'm not a doctor, but you go from the pill base to the insulin base. Maybe that's more absorbable. I've actually seen on TV where they have the once a week uh, injections. So that's that is moving forward. I've never, you know, that's not always been an option, but you could take an injection for once a week and still keep your, you know, insulin in check. So in other words, there are all types of options you may have. But I'm actually throwing the one option beyond food, you know, nutrition, of course, beyond exercise. We've got to move these bodies, right? Beyond that, attitude, baby. Attitude. You know, your aptitude measures your attitude. Your attitude measures your aptitude. I think how it goes, right? Well... Today's show wasn't exactly what I expected. I really wanted to go over some more data with you that came from CDC as it relates to African American health. But guess what I did do? I focused on a concept that you can see in how we walk through with health equity. We will be continuing this dialogue with you on health equity. I'm going to keep pushing it because I know it's not something that everybody wants. Again, I want to thank Can TV for allowing me to have this opportunity to come before you. And we hope that people do see this as it's ran again and again. But if you have more questions and want to call me personally, 312-961-6189. That is tax. And I am your favorite community epidemiologist, Sister Young. And thank you, Mr. Charles Patton, our People's Counselor. 
This is Tax. We'll see you again next month.